Leroy's Pokemon Sapphire Walkthrough Part 6. Welcome to Rustboro City, the first major city you're actually going to find in Hoenn. Um, let's see, Rustboro City, the city probing the integration of nature and science. Um, now, we're going to check out everything here in Rustboro City, but first thing I'm going to do is heal my Pokemon because my Ralts is dead. Alright, now let's take a tour. So, the first thing you want to do when you get here is probably head over to the Cutter's House, which is just right by the Pokemon Center. Um, you need to go in here in order to beat the game, so you should probably just do this right away. Now, just go ahead and talk to this guy, um, and he'll talk to you, and he will give you the HM for Cut, which is HM01. So yeah, um, and it's free, you don't even have to do anything, I don't know why he gives it to you. I mean, HMs are supposed to be like one of a kind, you can't find them anywhere else in the game, but this guy just like will give it to you for free. So yeah, you can use that move to um, cut down trees, which you'll need to do in order to beat the game. Now, I will say right now, you're going to have to teach this to one of your Pokemon, um, but I wouldn't recommend teaching it to one of your better Pokemon. Like, I'm not going to teach it to Trico, for instance. Um, it's not a very powerful move, so I'd recommend catching some extra Pokemon to teach it to, um, just for that use only. So yeah, just be careful with that. You don't want to get that stuck on one of your Pokemon, because once you teach it, you cannot forget it. It's stuck there forever. So yeah, um, I guess now we can check out this place up here. Um, is it that? Yeah, it's this building up here. This is the Pokemon Trainer School. They'll teach you anything about Pokemon, so yeah. Um, if you go ahead and you talk to this guy up here, he will just leave. It's like, what the heck, I'm trying to talk to you. But he goes ahead and looks at his students, then he comes back. Now, the only reason you come in here is because this guy will give you an item. It's called the Quick Claw. Now, what this item does, if you attach it to one of your Pokemon, it will give it a better chance of going first in battle if it's the slower Pokemon. So, it's good to teach that to one of your slow Pokemon. Now, both of my Pokemon are actually pretty fast, but since um, Ralts is slower, I will give it the Quick Claw. And it's definitely worth it because it'll come in handy at some point in the game. So yeah. Uh, now let's move on here. What else can we check out? Um, the gym's here, of course. The first gym in the game. Um, but we're actually going to check out this building. We're going to go to the gym later. Now if you talk to this girl right here, you can actually trade with her. So if you have a Slackoth, which you can find in the Petalburg Woods, you can trade her for a Makuhita. Um, it's a pretty good trade. You can catch Makuhita like, in the next city, basically. But if you don't want to wait that long, you can catch it right there. If you're playing Emerald, you can trade her a Ralts for a C Dot. So, yeah. If you want to make trades, you can go to her. Now, over here is the Devon Corporation. Now, I've heard people call it the Devon Corporation, but I always called it the Devon Corporation, so that's just what I'm going to call it. Um, now, this is basically some place. Well, this guy says, Oh, you have our running shoes. Yeah, this place basically is some major corporation that makes a bunch of items. But unfortunately, you can't go into the building yet because only authorized people can go in. Yeah, even though you bought their shoes, you still can't go in because they don't care about you. So yeah. Uh, we'll check that place out later though because you'll be able to go in later on in the game. Now let's see, You there are two routes you can go into. Um, you can head into Route 115. There aren't any trainers in here, but you can grab an item if you go to the very end of it. And obviously you can't surf yet, so you're kind of stuck here. But you can grab a Super Potion, so that's worth it. And as you can see, there are like some trainers over there, but you won't be able to get to them till later on in the game. And this lady will just talk to you, so don't even bother with her. So yeah, and over here on the west, or the east, I always get those mixed up. Yeah, the east, um, there's a sign with an X on it apparently. And over here is Route 116, but I'm not going to check that out till later, so yeah. Um, now let's see, I think that's basically all the important stuff in here, so I'm going to go back to that double battle which we skipped over last time because our Ralts was dead, so we're actually going to fight these people now. So yeah, here it is. First double battle ever in a Pokemon game. This is actually the first one because um, double battles were not introduced until Ruby and Sapphire, so yeah. If you don't know how double battles work, they're kind of easy to figure out. Um, basically, you just choose a move with both of your Pokemon and you decide who you want to attack. So, like, pick Confusion, attack Dot. Quick attack, and choose who you want to attack. It's kind of easy to learn. Um, so yeah, my strategy always in double battles is to go after one Pokemon at a time. Because if you can kill one of them, it's a two-on-one battle, which is a lot easier. So yeah. And Growl's going to lower both of our attacks. Now what I don't understand, Growl, like, the Trico and the Ralts hear the Growl and it lowers their attack. But somehow Dot doesn't hear the Growl. His attack doesn't get lowered, but whatever. It's not a big deal. I always just thought that was weird. So yeah, Dot's gonna die, and now we can kill Lotad. 
Now, one funny thing, in double battles, you can actually attack your own partner. So, like, if I wanted to, I could use quick attack on Ralts. I don't know why you would do that, though, but it's just kind of funny. Um, and astonish, whatever. It's not gonna make a difference. Or it's gonna kill the thing. So, yeah, Lotad and Seedot are both dead. They're kind of partner Pokemon, they go together. But whatever. So, yeah. Um, and we fought all the other trainers, so we can move on now. Let's see, what else is there to show? Actually, I think right now what I'll do is go ahead into the Mart really quick, just because I want to buy a few items. So, um, you can't buy anything great right now. They got Pokeballs, Potions, Antidotes, Repels. Um, by the way, Super Potions are a really bad deal. I would not buy those. But I would buy Repels. Repels are really nice. You can use them to avoid fighting wild Pokemon in the grass. Um, you got X items here. If you need Pokeballs, I'm going to get a few Potions just because they're nice to have. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I'm going to do here. I don't really need any items other than that, so... Yeah, we can move on. Let's see. I think I'm going to go catch a Pokemon to teach Cut to right now. I said earlier I was going to do that, so let's just head into Route 116. And try to find a Pokemon that can learn Cut. Alright, here we go. Ninkata is a great Pokemon to teach Cut to. Um, well, I guess you could really pick anything, but... It's just, like, one of the earlier ones you can catch that can actually learn it, so... Yeah, we're going to weaken this down, and we're not going to use it on our team for anything other than using Cut, so... Yeah, keep that in mind. If you want to catch an Ninkata over here, they're somewhat decent when they evolve. You can evolve it into a Ninjask, which is really, really fast. Um, actually, the fastest Pokemon in the game, other than, like, Legendaries and stuff. It has pretty decent attack stats, so if you want to catch that, go ahead and use it. I wouldn't highly recommend it, though. So yeah, we got the Ninkata. And, let's see. Yeah, I don't really care about any of that information. So I guess we can give him a nickname. Let's just name you Cutter, since all you're going to do is cut. And no, not because it's emo, but just because it's going to cut trees down. So yeah, um... Let's go ahead and teach that to it right now. Now, like I said before, HM moves, when you teach it to a Pokemon, you cannot forget it. Except there's one part in the game where there's like a move deleter, but other than that, you cannot forget that move. So that's why I would not recommend teaching it to something like Trico. So yeah, let's go down here and test out our Cut. Because there are some trees down here that we couldn't get past earlier. So let's go ahead and use Cut. Oh, wait a minute. We can't use Cut. Why is that? Yeah, you actually can't use Cut until you get the first Gym Badge. It's like your Pokemon just like will somehow just not learn how to cut things until you got your first Gym Badge, which doesn't make any sense at all. But since we can't cut down trees, I guess the only thing we can do is head into the Gym. So, let's put up Trico, and head inside. Now, this is the first gym you're going to find in any game, and uh, if you're new, you should... If you're new to the game, you should talk to this guy, because he will give you all the advice you need to beat the gym leader. Um, so yeah, he's going to help you along the way of the game. He's going to be in all the gyms. And he will tell you that Roxanne is the gym leader, and she's a rock-type trainer. Who would have thought that the first gym leader in a Pokemon game would use rock-type Pokemon? I mean, that's, like, completely unique. But whatever. Um, yeah, actually three of the four first gym leaders use Rock-type Pokemon. So, yeah. And this guy says, don't take gym trainers lightly, but of course everyone takes gym trainers lightly. Especially these ones, because they have all Geodudes on their team. Now, if you have a Mudkip or a Trico, this gym is going to be super easy, because, um, Rock-types are weak to grass, and Geodudes are Rock and Ground-type, which makes them four times weak to grass, which means they're not even going to stand a chance against any grass-type move. Not even Bullet Seed. Um, however, if you have a Torchic, this battle, or this gym battle, is actually going to be kind of hard. So what I would recommend doing, you know that route in the northwest, or... Why do we keep saying west? Northeast. Yeah, the northeast part of Ro Rustboro City. Um, I'd recommend training over there and evolving your Torchic into a Combuskin, because then it will learn Double Kick, which is super effective against Rock types. Now, if you don't want to do that, um... In the Petalburg Woods, you can catch Shroomish, which will be kind of nice. Or earlier on, you can get like a Seedot or a Lotad or something. So yeah. Um, but for now, we're just going to kill these Geodudes. And Trico is going to get a ton of experience in here, just because it's going to kill everything. So Ralts will probably get a lot of action after the gym. And actually, the second gym is good for Ralts, so yeah. Trico, Trico can steal the spotlight here and take all the glory. And these people don't give you, like, any money, which is kind of annoying. Now, you can actually skip all these trainers if you walk around like this. So if you're doing, like, a speed run, you don't have to fight these people. But you might as well do it for the experience. 
Plus, just to like see how you match up against everybody. So yeah, here's another youngster. This guy only has one Pokemon, and it's a Geodude. Who would have thought a Geodude? But yeah, whatever. Um, we can just kill it with one Absorb. Yeah, these gym battles are really, really easy as long as you know what you're doing. As long as you're not using like Pound or Tackle, you're gonna have no problem because Geodudes have like no special defense. So there we go. We beat the second gym trainer, which means the only person left in here is. On the gym leader, Roxanne, and that is who we're going to be taking on next time, so stay tuned for more Pokemon Sapphire as we try to get our first gym badge.